how can you add 140 horsepower to your 4.6 liter two valve? Let's find out. In this video, we'll show you not one way, but two ways to improve the power output of your 4.6 liter two valve by 140 horsepower. In 1996, Ford introduced the 4.6 liter two valve in the Mustang, and it carried all the way to 2004. But they also ran the same combination as far back as 1991 in passenger cars. They also use it in trucks, meaning there's a ton of 4.6 liter two valves still out there running around. And they all have one thing in common. They all need more power. When it comes to 4.6 liter two valve motors, there are really two varieties. We have the non-PI motor that went from 1996 to 1998. And in 96, it started out at 210 horsepower and for it up that rating to 225 horsepower in 1998. But for 1999, they made a dramatic change. They changed the cylinder heads, camshaft, intake, and piston design and stepped all the way up to 260 horsepower in the power improved version or PI as we call it. Now, in my opinion, the best combination to have is actually the early non-PI motor. So why would we want a less powerful version? Well, there are a number of reasons. So let's take a look. So why choose the early non-PI Mustang over a later, more powerful PI version? Well, first of all, the early version is much less expensive. If you have to buy a Mustang, the early version is much less money than a later PI version. But the real reason is because of the engine combination. You see, when Ford made the non-PI version, they combined an 11cc dish with a 51cc combustion chamber. When they stepped up to the later PI version, they had a 17cc dish with a 42cc chamber. What that means in our plan was to install the later PI heads on our early non-PI version. And so the small chamber and the small dish make more compression than either one of the stock combinations. And more compression means more power. Knowing that that early non-PI motor was the hot setup, we went and grabbed one from a local wrecking yard. We grabbed a 1998 4.6 liter two valve and put it up on the dyno. We installed long tube headers, a fast XFI management system, and larger injectors to support our intended power output. We then ran it in baseline trim, then replaced the factory camshaft, the set of Extreme Energy 274 cams from Comp Cams. We then added a Zex Nitrous kit and finish things up by replacing the stock heads with a set of fully ported PI heads from Total Engine Airflow. We installed a matching PI intake and an Acufab throttle body and elbow. So what happened with all this testing? Let's find out. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the power output of our stock non-PI motor. And this was actually a 1998 version. We got from a wrecking yard as we can see here, run on the engine dyno with a set of long tube headers and open throttle body and no accessories the way we normally do with an electric water pump. Our non-PI motor rated at, rated at 225 horsepower from the factory, actually produced right at 260 horsepower flywheel and 341, 342 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, not a lot of RPM on this thing, despite the fact that these are overhead cam motors. It was a little disappointing when these things first came out and replaced the five liter, because they were overhead cam, they were big. We were hoping, oh good, overhead cam, these things are gonna rev. But Ford designed, especially these early non-PI motors, they designed them as torque motors, so we were a little disappointed. But as you can see here, it didn't do too bad. Uh, you know, not a good power curve, but, not a lot, the PI motor, the later PI motors, actually were a fairly good size improvement over these and they made the thing at least respectable. But these early non-PI motors, not that fantastic. So the first thing that we did, the same thing that everybody does, is the first thing we did after putting, and this one was already run with long tube headers and basically an air intake, it kind of had an open throttle body. But the first thing that we did was put cams in it. Now we put the Comp Extreme Energy 274 cams in it the non-PI cams, meaning the low lift version of the comp cams. So, and here's what happened when we installed the cams. The power output jumped quite a bit uh, from 260 to a touch over 300, 301, 302 horsepower. 
The peak torque was actually fairly comparable at 346 foot-pounds up from 341 or 42. All it did was kind of shift the curve out and make more, make more horsepower. Uh, the torque stayed about the same. And as you can see, down low here, we actually lost a little bit of torque, which is kind of typical. You might be able to tune a little bit of that out, but this is kind of what you should expect from just a cam change. I mean, these were fairly uh, good-sized cams, the 274s. But this is what you can get from a cam change on a non-PI motor. So now let's take a look at the next upgrade. Okay, as you remember, we installed the camshaft in the 4.6 liter non-PI two-valve motor and picked it up from 260 to 300, a little over 300 horsepower. So what we did next was actually add nitrous to the equation. Now, obviously nitrous works with every combination, no matter what it is, and works well on these non-PI motors. So here's what happened when we installed a 100 shot of, on the ZEC system. It was a wet EFI kit installed in, in an inlet tube in front of the throttle body. And the ZEX kit combined the nitrous and fuel in the single, single fogger nozzle. And we injected that in before the throttle body into the intake manifold. So let's find out what happens when we add our nitrous. Here is the 100 shot of nitrous. And as we expected, it picked the power up from right around 300 horsepower to right around 400 horsepower, which is kind of exactly what we'd expect from a 100 shot. And as you can see up here, we got a big jump in torque all the way up to right at 500 foot pounds of torque. So you definitely notice hitting the button on this thing. We activated this a little past 3,500. We got the spike right at 4,000 RPM, 500 foot pounds. And this thing would carry 400. Now there's, it dropped off down a little bit out near 5,000 RPM. And that's just because the thing got a little bit rich. We could tune that out of it, but we didn't spend a lot of time on this particular application doing the extra tuning. And maybe a fresh bottle would also help there. But you know, we took away on this 100 shot, we took away four degrees in this particular combination. We didn't want to hurt this motor. It was the only one that we had back in the day. And like I said, it came from a wrecking yard and we did not increase the ring gap on this. We actually ran it the way that it came. And we would eventually run superchargers on this, which I'll be doing videos on that as well. And never touch the ring gap. Although, you know, looking back, we probably should have. So that's the nitrous gain. We picked up a nice 100 horsepower. But now let's take a look at another way you can add 100 horsepower to the same non-PI combination. Now let's take a look at another way to add, push the power output of our non-PI 4.6 liter two valve over the 400 horsepower mark. So you remember we started out about 260. Then we added our camshaft, our XE274 non-PI camshaft, and picked that thing up to about 300. And when we added the nitrous, we pushed that over 400 or right at 400. But there's another way to do it that doesn't require filling the bottle and doing all that. And so what we did was instead of trying to jack up the power on this non-PI version, what we did was convert it over to a PI, at least the top end. So we installed a set of PI heads and all the PI heads by themselves will certainly improve the power because They've got a smaller combustion chamber, which means they're going to add power just from an increase in compression. And it's quite a bit. It's over 10 cc, so it's a nice increase. They also flow more, not, not so much in terms of peak flow, but a lot more average flow, especially through on the intake spot side, especially through the middle lift version. And they also have a lot more exhaust flow. But rather than just install a set of stock PI heads, we had a set ported from the guys at Total Engine Airflow. And those guys really know their thing. And the heads were flowed, uh, the ported PI heads flowed a ton more, both than either the stock non PI or the PI heads. So we installed those, installed these same cams, installed a PI intake and an AccuFab throttle body. And again, all of this was run with the same hooker long tube headers. So if we take a look, we'll show you what that PI top end upgrade was worth on this non PI short block. Take a look at that. Now, the nice thing is we still had basically the same bottom end that we had once we installed the cam in our non-PI version, but we had a ton more peak power. I mean, this thing made 406 or 407, and not only was the peak horsepower up, but the peak torque was up too. 
Peak torque was up to 392, 393 foot-pounds of torque, and it actually occurred a little later in the RPM range, out at 4,800, and peak horsepower occurred at 6,000 RPM, so it made the thing more usable without losing any low-speed torque. So whether you've got a PI motor, because this obviously this also works, if you put cams and ported PI heads on a PI motor, you'll be able to make good power, not quite as much as this, because the compression will actually be down compared to the non-PI short block and PI top end uh, hybrid combination like we had here. But as you can see, you can get power out of these PI motors, it just take, or out of these non-PI and PI versions. It just takes, like any, anything else, it takes ported heads, it takes the right camshaft, and there are even bigger comp cams we could have run, and the PI intake. Now, on the intake side, there's definitely more power to be had from other intakes, but like most of them, they're short runner, and they tend to trade the power down low for more peak power at the top. So if that's what you're looking for, those are definitely out there. But for right now, this is a good upgrade. Check it out. We went from 260 horsepower to a little over 400 horsepower on this, on this non-PI 1998 4.6 liter two valve. Well, let's get to the conclusion. Okay guys, before we get to what did we learn here, I need to point something out. I didn't have any video of the engines running on the dyno. This test was run maybe 15 years ago as a series of stories from Muscle Mustangs and Fast Fours. Shout out to Evan Smith and Jim Capisano. So now we can get to what did we learn. Well, what we learned here was that it's definitely possible to improve the power output of a 4.6 liter two valve, just like any motor. All you have to do is apply the right cylinder heads, camshaft, and intake. And in our case, you can apply it to either a non-PI or a PI motor. But remember, the non-PI is the hot setup. I'm Richard Holdner. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Also, make sure to comment, because I'm going to have playlists for every engine family coming up. Modular Fords, Coyotes, LS, Small Block, Big Block, Chevy, Dodge, Chrysler, Hemi, all of that stuff. I'll have everything because I test it all. Thanks for watching.